all right so now it's time to see how to flash express lrs on the r9 mx receiver so i'll set this aside so if you look closely we have similar connections on the receiver as well as we did on the r9 transmitter module so we have the voltage connection followed by the d for data then the clock and the ground connection so here you will have to solder the data wire and the clock wire and if you want you can also decide to power the receiver while flashing from the voltage and the ground pad over here but i power my receiver from the ground and the voltage connection that's at the bottom also you have to be very careful when soldering wires to these pads because they are very tiny and you have to be very good at soldering because there's a possibility that you can damage the receiver while uh, soldering the wires so you have to be extra cautious and follow this method so like before i'll use a few jumper wires and solder them to the connection pads So after sorting the wires we can now connect this to the ST-Link USB device and program the firmware so let's do that and then I've connected all the connections to the ST-Link device uh, in the right order so the clock on the receiver is connected to SWCLK the D-pad is connected to SWDIO and the ground is connected to ground and for power I'm using 3 volts so that's how you wire this up if I want I can even use the 5 volts because I'm using the voltage pad on the bottom but if you decide to use the voltage pad from this side then you will have to use the 3 volts. The best would be to use this because either ways in order to power the receiver you will anyways have to solder the wires on these two pads. So now I'll plug in the USB cable and you can see that the receiver has power supply and the red LED is blinking on it so currently I do have Express LRS version 1.1 on this and once again if you decide to use this method using the ST-Link adapter then you won't be able to flash the original FR Sky firmware on this because we will override the factory bootloader file and since we don't have access to the FR Sky bootloader file we cannot flash the original firmware so that's the reason and unlike the R9M the tricky part about this receiver is the bootloader itself now I know for a fact that the bind button on my receiver does work and we have to initiate the bootloader in order to flash express LRS and even if I press the bind button while powering on the receiver I cannot initiate the bootloader so express LRS configurator is not able to enter the bootloader so that way the flashing process is not completed so first i'll launch the st-link utility software and i'll click on connect to target so at this stage you should be able to get a successful connection if you don't then you have to make sure that your wires are soldered to the clock and the data pin properly and also make sure that they are not touching each other and also make sure that you have connected it to the right pin on the USB adapter. So as soon as I click on connect target the LED on the receiver will be turned off and if I click on disconnect target you will see that the LED is on again. Now let's see if your receiver is brand new and it has the original FR Sky firmware on it. Then the first thing that you'll have to do is connect to target and go to target and click on settings and make sure that you have selected normal and the reset mode is set to software system reset and the next thing that you have to make sure is click on the option bytes and here I have disabled the readout protection but when it's brand new from the factory with the FR Sky firmware 
this will be set to either level 1 or level 2 and read write protection bank A will also be enabled so for example if I turn this on and click on apply you'll see it says cannot read memory disabled readout protection so the first thing we have to make sure is to disable this and as soon as we do that we can then flash firmware on the receiver so once again I'll go to target click on option bytes and set this to level 0 and click on apply so now we have disabled the readout protection so once we disable the readout protection the next thing is to download the bootloader file from the express Alaris github website and i have the link in the description so here we have a list of bootloader file for various devices so because i have the r9mx receiver you will see that we have the r9mx elrs bootloader in the .frk format then we have the r9mx no button bootloader which is in the bin format and then we also have the r9mx bootloader.bin which is the default version i believe so when i was trying to flash express alaris for the very first time i had flashed this bootloader file and whenever i tried to flash the firmware using the express alaris configurator or even if i tried to update using beta flight pass through method the receiver couldn't enter the bootloader and that's why the flashing was not successful and even though the bind button on my receiver is working i'm unable to get it to enter the bootloader mode with this bootloader file so i would recommend that you install the r9mx no button bootloader dot bin file so i'll download this and after that in the express lrs configurator i'll select the latest version and in the device category i'll select frsky r9 and i'll select r9 mx receiver and since we are using the stlink method i'll select this and here we have to make sure that all the settings that we select are exactly the same as we selected while flashing the firmware on the transmitter module so for example you cannot select australia 915 megahertz on the transmitter and fcc 915 on the receiver you have to make sure that the frequency settings match followed by the binding phrase as well this is the most important part now because in the i6x with open tx we don't have the bind option in the express lrs settings it's very important that you set up a bind phrase on the receiver and the transmitter so that the binding can be successful and then if you want you can enable other options like no sync on arm or lock on first connection and because i enabled the telemetry option on the transmitter module i'll have to enable this in the receiver as well so once i'm done with the settings i'll click on build instead of build and flash because we will flash the firmware using the stlink utility software so once i click on build a firmware file will be generated which we will then flash using the stlink utility software so once the firmware file is generated make sure to copy it somewhere that you can access it easily and both the files are exactly the same it's just that the naming is different so for example i'll copy this file and paste it here so the first is the bootloader file and then we have the firmware file and to flash each of this we have to make a few changes to the address field and this was the most trickiest part for me and since i wasn't able to figure out this i contacted mr mariano and and he helped me with this so once again a huge thanks to him I wish Express LRS had this information on their website. Alright, so the first thing here is to flash the bootloader file. And to do that, we'll click on program. And I'll select the bootloader file first. 
and here make sure that the start address is exactly as it's shown over here I've even displayed this over here so that you can read it more easily and if these options are enabled you can uh, uncheck these options so for some reason when I had these options enabled and when I tried to flash the bootloader file or even the firmware file it wouldn't install the file and I would get some error so I decided to uncheck all these options and simply click on start after selecting the proper file over here so I'll click on start so once the bootloader file is installed on the receiver successfully the red LED on the receiver should light up and that indicates that the bootloader is installed properly and now we can move on to the firmware part so once again I'll click on connect to target and the LED on the receiver is turned off and this time I'll click on program click on browse and I'll select the firmware file and here we'll have to change the address so so the fourth zero from the very end will have to be changed to a number 8 and I have displayed the address over here so that you can read it more easily so make sure that you change the address over here otherwise the bootloader file that we just installed will be overwritten by the firmware file and in that case the receiver won't power on so after changing the start address we can click on start and the firmware is flashed on the receiver if you decide to click on program and verify you won't be able to flash the firmware and that's why I suggest you use the program option so anyways we have successfully flashed express LRS on the receiver we can now go ahead and disconnect the target and now I'll reconnect the USB adapter and now you can see that the LED is blinking so now I'll power on the transmitter module and connect it to the radio transmitter just to make sure that the transmitter and the receiver can bind successfully and the LED on the receiver is stable so that indicates that the binding is successful and, and even the transmitter beeped